Yeah, everybody, it was a lorry load of interesting cheeses. Hello, so let's recap on all the lore that happened whilst we just clicked accept through all the quests or escaped through the cutscenes so that we could enable ourselves to run out of content as quickly as possible. To set the scene for Warlords of Draenor, Garrosh, the main villain and major cop face of the last expansion, has escaped the trial that we made him sit through by jumping through a portal made by the traitor dragon Kairos, who's actually the leader of the bronze dragonflight. Blizzard actually want you to read the book to find this out so you can thank me for saving you from developing your brain through reading this. Garrosh travels to Draenor, the land where the orcs came from, and sort of where the Draenei come from. It's like a Draenor that's back in time so it creates an alternate timeline to our own that even Blizzard find hard to explain. Some point, oh my god, some point soon, Garrosh will go back in the past, but the point at which he arrives which is slightly before the events of Rise of the Horde. You can stop now. <laughs> For more information on what happened in our timeline here, just read a book or something. So in this timeline, Gary goes and gets his dad on us, Gromash. They, together with the Iron Horde, who are basically like an orcish Klu Klux Klan, because all they want to do is take out other races and think that they're shit, even though Gromash sounds like he's going to puke every time he talks. We will never be slaves! Anyway, Garrosh stops his dad drinking the blood of Manoroth, which means that they don't end up slaves of the Burning Legion like they were in our time. So then we move on to a story that we actually get to participate in, which is mainly just inconsequential filler content that's mildly interesting, so hey, keep watching! So anyway, we go through the portal that Gromash constructed to invade Azeroth. By the way, his plan to invade Azeroth seemed to be to send about four or five orcs at a time through a portal over the course of a whole pre-patch, while we continually slaughter them as they just come out. So yeah, once the expansion actually released, we take the fight to them and close the portal by rescuing the living batteries of Gul'dan and Cho'Gol. Basically, they were sort of powering the portal against their will. We then let Gul'dan stroll off at his own pace, which was definitely an intelligent decision. So this place we found ourselves in is called the Tanan Jungle, and it acts like a sort of cheesy intro sequence to all the evil warlords that we're going to fight in the expansion. So firstly there's Ner'zhul, the warlocky face mask guy, Gul'dan, the hunchback of Draenor and Legion fanboy, Karga, the one-handed guy, we don't know much about orc masturbation habits but we do know that he can't be choosy with the hand he uses. We've also got Blackhand, who's the Blackrock Foundry boss, and he also, well his face looks like an under the helm Darth Vader type thing. We've got Killrog Deadeye, and guess what, just like Blackhand has a black hand, Deadeye has a sexy pair of shorts, and partial blindness. You probably get some sort of state benefits for it, like, I don't know, they have in Warlords like extra skulls or whatever. Or Grim Doomhammer, the one with the hammer. It's literally just say what you see with Blizzard, so if I was in WoW I'd definitely be called James Big Penis probably. And no, before you say it, it's not because I'm a massive cock. It's actually because I carry a big dildo round with me just to use as a weapon. Oh yeah, by the way, hi to any kids watching. Okay, and then there's Garrosh, he's the angry annoying one, and Gromash, who is his dad. So anyway, Tanan Jungle. So we go through it, killing stuff, until we meet our corresponding friends from either the Horde or Alliance. Then the Alliance go off to Shadow Moon Valley and the Horde to Frostfire Ridge. We do all this with Cadgar the Mage who's just sort of been plonked into the main story of Warlords from nowhere and he suddenly got a load younger because Blizzard apparently thinks being old is lame. Random character number two is Mirad. You know, that guy with the book from the trailer from like 10 years ago. Yeah, he's helping out too. So after we do the little Tanan intro sequence thing, we go off leveling through each of the individual zones. So just in case you're not asleep yet, let's do an individual lore summary of every single one of those zones. Yay! In both Shadowmoon Valley and Frostfire Ridge, we first get our garrison. Law-wise, with the garrisons, we've been chosen to be the commander of our own base, and every single NPC from then on tells us, like, with the best things since sliced eggs or whatever it is. Gameplay wise for the garrisons, we click on a percentage, then we click accept, then we 
click on a percentage, then we click accept and so on. I think we can all agree that this feature has actually been a resounding triumph of this expansion. So the story of Shadowmoon Valley is in two parts. Mirad sorts stuff out with the Drenai leaders called the Exarchs in the north of the zone. Here they discover that one of them is being a sneaky little legion bad guy and he ends up being revealed as Sokrathar, who's actually one of the raid bosses that we deal with a lot later on. He ends up running off to another zone at the end of that story bit thing. So the other side of the story is with Yurel, who's a Drenai we rescued in Tanan Jungle. She goes around trying to stop Nazul wrecking stuff with his evil shadow council. Long story short, Nazul's trying to make a Death Star out of a graphic sufficient Drenai god called Anaru. He succeeds, but then fucks off and leaves Velen, who sacrifices himself by sort of dissolving himself to make the star nice again. Behold, the dark star falls now upon you. The Iron Horde will prevail, and all that stand against us will die. Don't worry too much about Velen though, we got a spare back on our world who's just sort of chilling out. We finally get to finish off Ner'zhul in the non-sexual way in the dungeon called the Shadow Moon Burial Grounds. So over to Frostfire Ridge now where there's some family drama Jeremy Cal type stuff going on with the Frostwolf brothers. Duratan, who's actually Thrall's dad, is arguing with his brother Gunnar. So that goes on for a bit but they end up fighting the Thunderlord clan together eventually who've actually teamed up with the Iron Horde. So you get to the Thunderlord boss Fenris and discover that he's actually Durotan and Gnar's long lost brother. And they're like Because I know somewhere deep down in my heart I still love you. No! And then you have to kill him anyway. So then the Iron Horde invades through a valley with loads of conveniently loose rocks at the top, and Gnar sacrifices himself by fighting heroically long enough for Drekthar, another orc nice guy, to use his shamany powers to cave in the valley on top of Gnar and the Iron Horde. Next, both the Horde and the Alliance go to Gorgrond, where Blizzard hits us with some more story that has no consequence whatsoever in the long term. Basically, the rocks are fighting the plants, the Iron Horde are upsetting the balance between them, and they're trying to use the rock people as weapons, they're also trying to get artifacts of power. We end up stopping them doing all this, and we get the artifacts of power, but they get destroyed anyway. Told you nothing happened.
So Talador's next, and here we level from 94 to 96. In this zone we chase after Gul'dan's partner Terengor, who's trying to take over Orkandun, which is like a Drenai sacred graveyard so we can eat up loads of souls to get power. We chase him all over and eventually he gets away until we face him in the dungeon, Orkandun, where he gets away again. We definitely need to work on our not letting people get away skills. The Iron Horde are assaulting Shatrath, led by Blackhand, so Khadgar helps us get a big metal ball and roll over stuff to kill it. Orgrim Doomhammer is involved and he objects to all the killing of innocents, so Blackhand ends up killing him. We're then given this wicked cutscene where Blackhand basically beats the shit out of our guys, but then we sort of cheat and stab him in the shoulder, then we blow him up, but guess what? He gets away. No one could have survived that. This vessel is set to blow. We should get to safety. Bring the cannon around. We'll send both of these ships to the bottom of the sea. From level 96 to level 98, we're in the Spires of Iraq, where we're helping out the birds in the area called the Arakoa. Make no mistake, we aren't chickening out here. <laughs> you know, because the, uh, the, the birds... Anyway, due to some stuff that happened ages ago with the bird gods, some of the birds ended up being chucked into the pools of corrupted waters. This stopped them being able to fly and made them a bit mental and aidsy. Other birds managed to avoid the corrupted waters by making their homes up in the skies and at the top of the mountains. So on the land you have the corrupted Arakoa, and up in the skies you have the uncorrupted Arakoa, or also called the Adherents. So the ones up in the sky, the uncorrupted Arakoa, are trying to wipe out the others because they've gone all sort of Aryan race, Nazi type ethic stuff. We end up helping out the corrupted Arakoa, and in the end we take out all the uncorrupted Arakoa bosses in Skyreach, the dungeon. We also help the good bird gods kill the bad one called Setha. Also in this zone, Captain Hook, also called Kargath, is messing up stuff at the top of the zone, so we team up with the birds and use the power of the former bird king, Terok, and we go on an orc murdering spree. But again, because we're mentally retarded, he ends up getting away. So our last leveling zone, Nagrand, is home of the Warsong clan ruled by our mate Gary. We eventually get to take him on, but first let's discuss that good old filler content, shall we? Jogal, Gul'dan's mate and mental ogre guy, is at the sacred Drenai spaceship landing site, draining the power of the Drenai Naru god thing. 
I don't understand how these things are gods if they do nothing but get caught by the bad guys and give them more power. Also, Cho'Gol's nicked one of the elemental forces of Nagrand, uh, the rocky one, to use as like a personal bodyguard, which has sent the elements out of balance. We get to Cho'Gol, take out the elemental, however Cho'Gol gets away. The elementals are fine long term though, because the rock element will be reborn or some shit. So yeah, no hard feelings for bashing him to pieces. We then take the fight to the Warsong clan and Garrosh, and in the end Thrall ends up challenging Gary to Mac Godok, which is like an orcish style trial where they fight to determine whether he's guilty or not. Thrall sort of chills for a bit while Gary bashes his teeth out, and then Thrall conveniently remembers that he actually has superpowers and electric chairs Gary. Answer for your crimes, Garrosh. If we find out Garrosh got away, I will actually excrete in an envelope and send it to Blizzard. So there's all the zones. Doesn't it feel better now knowing what happened, or does it feel worse knowing that you've just lost minutes of your life and you can never get that time back ever? So anyway, we still have to discuss patch 6.2 and the legendary quests and the raids. So in patch 6.2, Gromash retreats back to Tanan jungle, and the hunchback of Draenor, Gul'dan comes to see him again and tries to make him drink his date rape drink again. Gromash refuses, so Gul'dan starts using his green stuff on him and the rest of Tanan, and he does a major Grand Designs feature on Hellfire Citadel. Everyone was basically screaming for more garrison style gameplay, so Blizzard gave us a shipyard to assault Tanan. Thanks Blizzard. In Tanan we're generally fighting the Legion and Deadeye's bleeding Hollow Clan, who've teamed up with Captain Hunchback. There's like a big plot line where Gul'dan tries to get an elemental lord to kill us, but we just kill it straight away. Moving on to the legendary quest, it involves us helping Khadgar, the suddenly important mage, to fight Gul'dan, who Khadgar sees as the real threat throughout the whole expansion. We find out that Garrosh killed Kairos after he brought him through to Drenor because he didn't want to be his puppet. Also, a half-orc slash Drenai called Garona tries to take Khadgar out, but we save him with the help of Jaina, and we free Garona's mind from Gul'dan's control. She totally rats on him, and we spy on the exchange between Gul'dan and Gromash, where they break up. Oh yeah, and also Khadgar makes us wear a ring that everyone needs, or you can't be part of a raid group. This all leads us to the final raid, Hellfire Citadel. 
But first, we haven't covered any of the other raids yet, so just some brief notes on those. So High Mall is the Citadel of the Ogres. They've teamed up with the Iron Horde, so we have to take them out. So we do. And that's more or less it. Oh yeah, and also we kill Kargeth there. Blackrock Foundry is where they make the weapons, and it's also where Blackhand's hiding out. Each boss has a bit of random lore, but I'm off to Tesco soon to do our weekly big shop, so just watch like a novel video or something to find out more about them. And lastly we have Hellfire Citadel where we take on bosses like Killrog Deadeye, Gorefiend who's actually Terran Gore that couldn't stop eating souls, and also a resurrected Manoroth. So at the end of the raid, Blizzard actually gave up with creating incredible lore events, so just let Gul'dan randomly create a massive portal which previously required all sorts of artifacts and, and things, and he just summoned one of the Burning Legion's major managing directors, Archmond. We managed to take him out, and he mentions that Gul'dan made a pact before zapping him into who knows where. think it's over. Gul'dan and the devils that command him are not so easily banished. I fear this is only beginning. If you ever need us, we will be here. <laughs> Until we meet again. A great man once told me, in the light, we are one. The future is ours, and we will see Drano rebuilt, together. So after all that, we decided to forget all the killing and the genocide that Gromash and the Iron Horde did, and Gromash magically stops being a racist, and we all make friends. The end. That's actually what happens. So yeah, as I said, I'm off to Tesco's now, so as a final note, to help our tiny little channel out, please like, comment and subscribe, because it will help us grow, and it also lets our videos invade your homepage like an aggressive rash, and I hope to see you around here again sometime. Cheers! <laughs>